Thank you. It's, it's great to be here with you in, in Delhi. You know, throughout history, there have always been inventions that have changed the world. The telephone, printing press, um, the television and radio, um, railways and automobiles. All these inventions changed our lives and changed society because they help connect people. When people are connected, we can accomplish some pretty amazing things. We can get closer to the people that we care about. We can get access to new jobs and opportunities and ideas. Uh, we can receive education and, and health care and communication and access to new services. But technology isn't progress by itself. Instead, it enables progress and a lot of the things that we care deeply about. But technology, it has to serve the whole of society. Connectivity can't just be a privilege for some of the rich and powerful. It needs to be something that everyone shares and an opportunity for everyone. So in July, we, we started working with Airtel um, to launch free basic internet services in Zambia. And for the first time, hundreds of thousands of people uh, started to get access to services like Wikipedia and Google and local news and information. And we start to hear some pretty amazing stories um, rolling in pretty quickly. An expectant mother uh, using the internet to uh, learn about information about her pregnancy and how to care for her child. An elderly man who used to have to walk a, a far distance to go to a local library uh, now could find and download the books that he wanted to read online. Um, a student who is studying for exams could use Wikipedia to save time and money uh, getting the information that she needed to study. So these are just a few of the benefits of, of being connected. And when the benefits of, of this technology are shared across the whole society, that's when we can start to make a really big leap forward. So that's what we're excited about. Now, throughout history, India has always been really good and shown an ability to make these leaps. Uh, because of the Green Revolution, you lifted hundreds of millions of people out of poverty and, um, and showed that this country could, can feed itself. Um, because of how, how you've embraced the computer revolution, uh, you have a vibrant computer industry and a lot of the best engineers in the world. Um, you know, just last month, India became the first country in Asia and one of the only countries in the world to send a probe to Mars it's a huge technical achievement. Now, because you've embraced science and research and education, now the next generation here has the opportunity to define the future and bring India to the world and the world to India. And a key to this next big opportunity is going to be embracing the Internet. Because if you embrace the Internet, you can transform lots of people's lives and, and you can touch um, and, and you can improve um, people's lives and, and these communities even more in the next generation than you were able to in the last. But we have a long way to go to get there. Because today, only about a third of people in the world have access to the Internet at all. Uh, more than two-thirds of people, or about two-thirds of people, don't. Only, only 2.7 billion people um, have any access. Here in India, um, it's, it's a bit better. You have two, 243 million people are connected to the Internet. And... Um, more than 100 million are on Facebook already. So, I mean, th that's a big achievement. Um, but, you know, there's still more than a billion people in India who, don't, who can't connect and don't have access to the same opportunities as everyone else. And because of this, I, I think that the, the whole world is being robbed of those people's ideas and creativity. So it's not just those folks who are missing out, but we really all are. Now, it's easy to assume that it's just a matter of time before everyone gets connected, right? After all, you know, most people have mobile phones. And um, for a lot of us, it's actually pretty hard to even imagine what a mobile phone is without an internet connection. But if you, if you think about the cost of having a mobile phone um, with an internet connection, the vast majority of that cost isn't actually the phone itself. It's the connection and, and the internet access. So it's actually pretty easy to imagine a world where unless we can decrease the cost of, of getting access to the internet.
they need to change this and, and make it so that this is affordable and so that everyone can, can uh, have access to the internet all the time. So for the last 10 years, uh, Facebook has been on this mission to make the world more open and connected. And for us, that really means the, the whole world, not just the, the people in the countries that, um, that are already connected and, and are on the internet today. We believe that connectivity is a human right and that connectivity and, and getting connectivity for the world is one of the fundamental challenges of our generation. So we want to help build an internet that works for everyone. Last year, we, we launched this effort, internet.org. It's our effort with a handful of other technology companies to bring affordable, basic services to everyone in the world. And we've already made some, some good progress. Um, in the last year alone, we've already helped more than 3 million people get access to the internet. But this is really just a start when you think about the scale of the problem. And in order to really tackle this, we're going to have to solve and knock down all of the major barriers that people have to connectivity. So that's what today in this summit is all about, is discussing those and how we can make progress on knocking down those barriers. Over the last few years, uh, we've made, we've done a lot of research to understand each of these barriers. And last week, we published uh, with McKinsey uh, a, a report that goes into a bunch of detail on, on a number of these barriers. You know, so now we know that there are four and a half billion people who are not connected at all, who are offline. 3.4 billion of these people are in just 20 countries in the world. 900 of these people are um, A little more than a billion aren't connected because they don't live near an existing uh, mobile network. So they, they just can't get access to 2G or 3G um, signals. So what this research shows is that there are these three major barriers to connecting everyone. The first barrier is infrastructure. For 10 or 15 percent of the world's population, the primary barrier is that it is a technical one. They just don't live within range of an existing 2G or 3G network. So most of these people live in very remote or rural locations, and a lot of those places also lack other basic infrastructure like roads or electricity. There are more than 600,000 villages in India that face these kind of challenges. And um, tomorrow, I'm meeting with Prime Minister Modi. And I know he's incredibly connected, uh, uh, committed to connecting all of these different villages. And I'm excited to see how Facebook can help in, in this initiative to do that. But building and maintaining uh, this kind of traditional infrastructure in these villages is um, it's really expensive and difficult. And when you look at connecting the whole world, it's actually not the main problem that most people have. Uh, today, more than 85% of people already live within range of an existing network. So for these people, the primary challenge is economic, or the next challenge is economic. Around 2.5 billion people um, in the world live on less than $2 a day. So even though phones and data access are getting cheaper over time, it's still not affordable for most people. And, you know, so you could just say, all right, so why don't... What would happen if we just lowered data? Even if mobile operators lowered their prices, that might help some more people connect in, in the near term, but it wouldn't be sustainable because the infrastructure that operators have to build out, um, they, they spend tens of billions of dollars a year on. And if they just lowered prices without also increasing the efficiency of the infrastructure that's required, then that isn't a sustainable way to operate and, and spread the Internet. So there are all these um, economic barriers as well. But the biggest set of barriers are actually social. Uh, one big barrier to internet use is the lack of relevant local language content. And this is going to be a big theme that I'm going to come back to in a bit and that we'll, we'll talk about, um, and that's a, a lot of what this summit is. In some communities, people can't connect because it's just not culturally acceptable. Um, our research has found that in developing countries, 25% fewer women than men um, are, are connected to the internet. And, you know, if we want to live up to our full potential, uh, we really need an Internet where every woman has the right to get connected and get online. So that's an important cultural and, and social barrier. But the biggest barrier is actually that a lot of people who have never experienced the Internet just don't know why they would want it or, or why it's a useful thing for them. A, a recent survey that we did um, shows that 69% of people um, in India who are not connected if you ask them why they're not connected, 
what they say is that they don't know why the internet would be useful for them. Which is kind of mind-boggling if you think about it, but, but if you think about it for a moment, it makes sense. Because most people can actually afford some basic connectivity. But if you grew up and you never had access to a computer, um, and you never had access to the internet, and, and, you, uh, and you haven't used the internet, and then someone asked you, do you want to buy a data plan, then you'd probably also ask, why would I want that? So th these are all kind of big social barriers. And over the last few years, we've been working towards knocking down each of these big barriers. Uh, in the US, one model that we talk about from time to time is, you know, you can always call 911. Or um, in India, it's, it's similar. You can dial 100 to, to access the police. But in, in, you can dial 911. And even if you haven't paid for a phone plan, you can always get free help if there's a medical emergency or if there's a crime or a fire or something else that you need help with that, that's, um, or, or you're in danger. And I think that there needs to be a 911 for the Internet, where even if you haven't bought a data plan or can't afford that, you can get free access to some basic services for health, education, jobs, communication, just some, some really important basic things. So one of the main things that we've done over the past year is we've started working with operators in a few countries. Um, to start in, in Indonesia, in the Philippines, in, in Tanzania, and Paraguay, to start offering free basic services to folks. And the idea is that this starts to break down some of the biggest social barriers, because it makes it so that folks can start to um, experience the internet um, and use some things and, and understand why it would be valuable for them and get exposure to other services that they might over time want to pay for, which in turn makes a more profitable model for operators and allows them to invest more in building out the infrastructure required to deliver the internet at a greater scale. So, so far with, uh, with deploying these tests in this model, we've already helped connect more than three million people. So we're, we're really excited and, and, and proud of this. In July, Airtel became the first partner that we worked with to launch the internet.org app um, with free basic services in Zambia, including providing free data access for tools like health and education um, and, and jobs portals. Uh, so it's, the, the results there are just are really encouraging. And we're looking forward to doing more and bringing this internet.org app to a lot more countries soon. Now, we've worked on trying to help solve some of these other barriers, too. So over the last year at Facebook, we've, we've changed the way that we build products in, in order to design them to be more data efficient for folks who have lower bandwidth or just higher data costs. And one of the things that I'm really proud of is that in the last year, we've reduced or we've, um, we've, ch we've improved our Android app to make it 50% faster and use 50% less data, which is, is a really big saving for um, on, on your data bill, especially in, in, in high data cost areas. And to continue making our app use even less data and become even more performant in developing countries, we've built this whole system that internally we call air traffic control. And what it lets us do is simulate network conditions um, all over the world and, and all different operators and environments. We're also working with Ericsson, uh, one of our internet.org partners, to build an internet.org lab where all developers and companies can come and test and refine um, how their apps will work in, in developing um, countries as well by simulating different network conditions. So there, there's a lot more here to do that we're excited about. We're also doing some work to address some of the physical challenges to connectivity that the 10 or 15 percent of folks who live outside of, um, out, outside of range where there's just no existing network infrastructure are. So deploying traditional uh, network infrastructure to connect rural communities with, uh, with low population density is, isn't really cost effective or practical, which is, is why it hasn't been done yet. So we're working to develop new technologies that can be more efficient uh, for, for doing this and to help connect these 15% of people. So earlier this year, we launched the Connectivity Lab, which is designing new technologies like um, satellites and solar-powered uh, planes that can beam down internet from the sky and, and help connect folks in these areas that traditional technology hasn't been cost effective to deploy. So we're looking forward to doing more here too. There's, this is just a, there's a huge amount that, that can be done. So now, I also want to talk today about really the last barrier to connectivity.
sure that we can deliver more local language content. All right. There we go. Thank you. So this is a really important challenge. And it's one of the things that I really hope we make a lot of progress for over the next couple of days at this internet.org summit. Today, more than 80% of the content on the internet is in just 10 languages. Um, so for developing countries, especially in Asia and Africa, uh, a, lot of the, the, a lot of the people just aren't well represented online, especially in their local language. In India, there, there are 22 official languages and, and 11 scripts, and there are hundreds of other unofficial languages. But even though a lot of people speak these languages, uh, there isn't a lot of content online in these languages. And, and, and most of the services that people use are really just available in English um, and, and a, few other, uh, a few other languages. But if we want to connect everyone in the world, then we really need to build services that reflect the languages and, and the way that, um, that, that people speak and communicate. So we need services and, and content that, um, and good product experiences in, in everyone's languages. So this is something that, that Facebook, just, we at Facebook believe really deeply in. Um, and, and since 2007, we've been working on our own language localization. So right now, um, one of the things that, that we're proud of is that more than 65% of people use Facebook in a language other than English, uh, including 10 different Indian languages that we continue to work on to make sure that our, our products not only are translated well, but that the whole experience is optimized for working well in those languages. Now, we still have a long way to go to get the whole internet to, to the level that, that this is at. Um, so today, we're announcing a, a couple of new programs that, that we think will help out in getting there. We're launching this contest uh, to drive development of new apps and services in local languages. We're creating an initial fund of $1 million uh, to help developers build and scale apps that, that will help um, serve farmers and, and migrant workers um, and students and, and women. And we're going to run this competition, and we're going to provide funding to the top apps in each of these categories. And, um, we're basically going to look at, at the different apps that get made and try to figure out which ones will have the biggest impact on people and communities in developing countries. We're also, in, a, in addition to that, going to extend a program that we already have called FB Start, which offers up to $40,000 in free tools uh, to developers building these kind of apps to help them build, grow, and monetize the experiences that they're, that they're building. So connecting the world is not something that any one company can do by itself. Right? So we have to work together with developers and entrepreneurs and businesses and leaders and governments to deliver all these services and the content that people need. And I'm really excited to see how people use these tools and what comes out of these contests um, to help push this forward. So that's how we're approaching connecting the world with internet.org. Um, connecting the world, uh, we really believe is one of the fundamental challenges of, of our generation. And you know, progress is going to be difficult here, and it's not guaranteed. But I think if we work together, we can really make a big impact on knocking down some of these barriers to connectivity, both here in India and all over the world. Um, India is it's this, it's this amazing country with unlimited potential. And you know, if we can connect more people here, we can not only improve the lives of hundreds of millions of people in India, but we can help bring this rich culture and imagination um, and innovation to all of the rest of the world. So I hope you'll join us in doing this. Thank you.